that an explorer from Spain by the name of Columbus discovered America. When in truth, he discovered nothing. When in truth, there had been indigenous peoples living upon this land for centuries upon centuries upon centuries for thousands of years. Here in our own land of flowers, right here where we are today, this was the home of the people known as the Tequesta. Tequesta means the people of the good earth. They were farmers and hunters and the growers of flowers. By 1800, there were no Tequesta left. Thanks to slavery, and settlement battles and disease brought by the European settlers. There were native peoples all over this land to the four directions. And then on May 28, 1830, President Andrew Jackson unlawfully signed the Indian Removal Act to force the southeastern nations from their homelands and into the west. One of those families were my ancestors, and one of those it was the ancestral family of the Muskogee Creek poet and musician Joy Harjo. Joy Harjo was born in my native Oklahoma in 1951 as a member of the Muskogee Creek tribe. She's a child of a teen mother, an alcoholic father, lived in poverty. Her life was saved, she says, when she found the spirit of poetry. Poems are the carriers of dreams, knowledge, and wisdom, Joy says. And those dreams carried her to this year, 2019, when she was named Poet Laureate of the United States of America, the first Native American ever so honored. That she has won this with poetry fighting for the voice of Native Americans, the first nations of this land, is remarkable. It is history making and it is hope making. And while her poetry leads her across the world, she returns always to the land of her birth, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she prays that all of us may find our way home. And so as we honor First Nations Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, the day of the indigenous ones, not the colonizers, we share this morning every word from this one forward, the poetry of Joy Harjo. This reading is from the dedication of her new book, American Sunrise, released to celebrate her becoming poet laureate. When President Andrew Jackson unlawfully signed the Indian Removal Act to force southeastern peoples from homelands to the west, we were rounded up with what we could carry. We were forced to leave behind houses, printing presses, stores, cattle, schools, pianos, ceremonial tr grounds, tribal towns, and churches. We witnessed immigrants walking into our homes with their guns and their Bibles and their household goods and their families taking what had been ours. As we were surrounded by soldiers and driven away like livestock at gunpoint, there were many trails of tears for tribal nations all over North America of indigenous peoples who were forcibly removed from their homelands by government forces. Now, the indigenous peoples who are making their way up from the southern hemisphere now are a continuation of the trail of tears. May we all find our way home. We gather by the shore of all knowledge as peoples who were put here by a God who wanted relatives. This God was lonely for touch and imagined herself as a woman with children to feed, to sing with, to continue the web of the terrifyingly beautiful cosmos of her womb. This God became a father who wished for others to walk beside him in the belly of creation. This God 
laughed and cried with us as a sister at the sweet tragedy of our predicament, foolish humans. Or built a fire as a brother to keep us warm. This God, who grew to love us, became our lover, sharing tables of food enough for everyone in this whole world. Oh, sun, moon, stars, our relatives peering at us from inside of God's house. Walk with us as we climb into the next century, naked but for the stories that we have of each other. Keep us from giving up in this land of nightmares, which is also the land of miracles. We sing our song, which we have been promised has no beginning and no end. All acts of kindness are lights in the war for justice. We gather up these strands broken from the web of life. They shiver with our love as we call them the names of our relatives and carry them to our home made of the four directions and sing. Of the south where we feasted and were given new clothes. Of the west where we gave up the best of us to the stars as food for battle. Of the north where we cried because we were forsaken by our dreams. <coughs> of the East, because we returned to us in the spirit of all that we love. To pray, you open up your whole self. To sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. And know there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know, except in moments steadily growing and in languages that aren't always sound, but other circles of motion. Like eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, we see ourselves and know that we must take the, up, the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in, knowing we are made of this, knowing we are made of all this, and breathe knowing we are truly blessed because we were born and die soon within a true circle of motion. Like eagle rounding out the morning inside us, we pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. where all around me stands an earth house made of scarlet, of jet, of ochre, of white shell. It is more than beautiful at the center of the world. Anything that matters is here. Anything that will continue to matter in the next several thousand years will continue to be here. Approaching in the distance is the child you were some years ago. See them laughing as they chase a white butterfly. Never. She can come up with something. Yeah. <laughs> Never is the most powerful word in the English language, or perhaps any language. It's magic. Every time I have made an emphatic pronouncement invoking the word never. Whatever follows that I didn't want to happen, happens. Never has made a fool of me many times. And it doesn't matter when the statement is made, never will wait, never will hunt down fate. I've considered using the word never for the opposite effect. For example, I will never. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I have considered using the word never intentionally for the opposite effect, like, I will never win the lottery. <laughs> or there will never be peace in this world. It won't work. <laughs> it never will. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stand tall, no matter your height, how dark your skin, your spirit is all colors within. You are made of the finest woven light, light from the iridescent love that formed your mothers, fathers, your grandparents, all the way back on the spiral road. There is no end to this love. It has formed your bodies, feeds your bright spirits, and no matter what happens in these times of breaking, no matter dictators, the heartless, and liars, no matter, you are born of those who kept ceremonial embers burning in their hands, all through the miles of relentless exile. Those who sang the path through massacre all the way to sunrise, you will make it through. Bless this land. Oh, I was getting ready to hold it. Bless this land. from the top of its head to the bottom of its feet, from the Arctic old white head to the brown feet of tropical rain. Bless the eyes of this land, for they witness cruelty and kindness in this land. From the sunrise light upright to falling down on your knees night. Bless the ears of this land. For they hear cries of heartbreak and shouts of celebration in this land. Once we heard no gunshot on these lands. The trees and stones can be heard singing. Bless the mouth, the lips, and the speech of this land. For the land is a speaker and a singer and a keeper of all that happens here on this land. Bless the arms and hands of this land for they remake and restore beauty in this land. We were held in the circle around these lands by song and reminded by the knowers that not one is over the other. No human above bird, no bird above insect, no wind above grass. Bless the heart of this land on its knees planting food beneath the eternal circle of breathing, swimming, and walking this land. The heart is poetry maker. There is one heart, said the poetry maker. One body and all poems make one poem and we do not wor use words to make war on this land any longer. Bless the femaleness and the maleness of this land for each holds the fluent power of becoming this land. Bless the destruction of this land. For new shoots will rise up from flower, from flood, from earthquake, from fierce winds to make new this land. Bless the two legs and two feet of this land, for the sacred always walks beside the profane in this land. Bless the creation of new land. For out of chaos, we will be compelled to remember and bless this land. Bless these lands, said the remember. These lands aren't our lands. These lands aren't your lands. We are this land. And the blessing began a graceful moving through the grasses of time from the beginning to the circling around in the place of time, always moving, always moving, always moving, always moving, always moving, always. When President Andrew Jackson unlawfully signed the Indian Removal Act to force move southeastern people from their homeland to the west. We were rounded up with what we could carry. We were forced to leave behind houses and printing presses and stores and cattle and schools, pianos, ceremonial grounds, tribal towns, and churches. There were many trails of tears all over North America. 
the indigenous peoples who will make their way up from the southern hemisphere right now are a continuation. A trail of tears. May they, may we all find our way home. Going to sing two chants together to seal this time together in memory. Let's go to the next slide, Steve, so we can show. So you'll see on this side, Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heartbeat. On the other side, you see Earth is our mother. So y'all on this side, you're the Earth is our mother side. Unless you want to be contrary, that's okay. And y'all on this side, you're the mother I feel you under my feet. Let's start with mother I feel you. Take care of her. Hey, young guy, hey, young guy, hey, young guy, hey, young guy. 